Hello and welcome to the second part of the introduction in our module about Tocharian. In this lesson you will get an overview of what language context sources can tell us about the prehistory of Tocharian. Loans to and from Tocharian are of importance to locate Tocharian in time and space before our attested sources. The earliest attested sources in Tocharian are from the 4th century common era but we know that Tocharian was spoken in the area much longer than that. And therefore we may also trace loans in adjacent languages as well as loans from adjacent languages into Tocharian. First, Iranian loans are important in Tocharian. Several of them are very likely from the so-called BMAC culture, the Bactria Margiana archaeological complex. Um, which is a state associated with early Indo-Iranian. For instance, we have Tocharian B, Ischem, which means clay and brick. Uh, and uh, we also have a well-known word, uh, the word for lion, as you can see here, is also found in Sanskrit in uh, the word Sima or Simaka, which means lion. And uh, it's found in modern Chinese, and so forth. And this is probably a loan from uh, the Bima culture or from early Indo-Iranian or probably even early Indo-Aryan into all these languages, including Tocharian. Uh, another important word is the word for the for donkey, uh, the Kerchapo in Tocharian B, and it's related to Sanskrit Gardaba which also means donkey, and it probably uh, goes back to a protoform uh, Gordebo, and um, it was borrowed uh, at a very early uh, state into Tocharian. So, we also have Turkic loans in Tocharian. Uh, and the Turkic loans are from a later state uh, than the BMAC loans in Tocharian. And, the, and this indicates that the Tocharians came in contact with uh, Turkic people later than they were in contact with uh, Iranians or in uh, early Indo-Aryans. So we have here, as you see, uh, Tocharian A Kanak, Tocharian B Kenek, cotton cloth, which is from a uh, common Tocharian Kenek, and it is uh, obviously a Turkish borrowing. Another uh, word is Tocharian B. Persheri, which means flea, and it uh, is also very likely borrowed from Turkic. And of course, the word for lady and princess, Katun, in Tocharian A, uh, is from Uyghur Katun or Katun, and is also pre uh, present in Cotonese, Katune, Katune. So, there are Tocharian loans in Chinese. Uh, and in the absolutely earliest stages of the Chinese, we have loans from Indo-European, which are very likely before some state of Indo-European became some very early state of Tocharian. And the loans from Indo-European into Chinese uh, are uh, target several important innovations, such as the word for wheel. And uh, later loans from Indo-European into early Chinese can be identified by their phonology as being uh, some sort of very early or pre or proto uh, Tocharian. So we have, for instance, uh, the word for honey, and it's uh, the most certain word of this type. Uh, it is the well-known Indo-European root medho, honey and mead, and it is in Tocharian B, mit. And uh, in uh, the Middle Chinese reconstruction is something like meat, Old Chinese meat, honey, and uh, that's clearly borrowed from Tocharian. So we have loans from Chinese into Tocharian, and they are quite frequent. So first we have the Tocharian loans from Old Chinese into Tocharian. So, uh, the most well-known word is the word for rice, and of course it's not strange 
that the Tokarians borrowed the word for rice from the Chinese because they probably took over the uh, rice cultivation from the Chinese. So in Tokarian A and B, it is uh, clue. Sorry. And then uh, we have uh, the Tokarian B word for the last month of the year. I mean, corresponding to something like December. And it's in Tokarian B, Rapanye. And um, it is also uh, borrowed from uh, Old Chinese. And in Old Chinese, is, it means uh, winter sacrifice. So it's like a specific type of uh, holiday in early Chinese, which came to be the name of the last month of the year in Tokarian. And uh, another interesting word is the Tokarian word for town, Tokarian A Ri, Tokarian B Rie. And it's uh, matching Old Chinese uh, Li, uh, a modern Chinese Li, uh, Old Chinese something like R, uh, which means a walled city. So it is likely that the Tokarians borrow the word from uh, the Chinese. I mean, the Chinese, they built towns and fortifications. The Tokarians came uh, migrating from, uh, from Ukraine all the way to uh, Central Asia, Eastern Central Asia. But it is also possible that the word was borrowed the other way around. So we cannot tell from the phonology whether it was a loan from uh, Old Chinese to Tokarian or the other way around. So, um, there are also loans from early Middle Chinese, which means that these words are later, these are later loans from Chinese. But they indicate that uh, Chinese, the Chinese language continued to have an impact on the Tokarian language through the history. So it was not like Iranian or uh, like Turkic that the language impact on Tokarian was temporary, it was uh, continuous. So we have, for instance, uh, the word in Tokarian A, Shostank, which means a tax collector. And it also corresponds to Nia Prakrit Shostamgat, which is tax collector. It's also found in Bactrian. Uh, however, the source is most likely uh, Chinese or Old Chinese or Middle Chinese. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's a combination that means that you collect something, tax, taxes. And uh, we have the Tokarian A word Shuksh, uh, which is uh, the word for a smaller village. And um, uh, it's also uh, likely borrowed from uh, early Middle Chinese rather than Old Chinese. And finally, the word Ankh, which means uh, seal or stamp. And it was also uh, borrowed from uh, early Middle Chinese rather than Old Chinese. And uh, it's uh, not strange that the Tokarians borrowed a word for a seal or a stamp from the Chinese. So, uh, large parts of Tokarian vocabulary is obscure. However, if we consider the vocabulary for farming, pastoralism, technology, industry, hunting and war, which we have done here in, in a study in our research group, we notice that uh, Tokarian B has 12 percentage uh, loans and Tokarian A has 13 percentages. So it's, um, it's relatively low. Uh, I mean, there are languages that have less uh, here, but um, there are also languages that have many more loans than uh, Tokarian. So Tokarian is not a, a high borrower. It's not a language that borrows very many culture words. So how do we know that Tokarian is an Indian language? Very important question. We have at least 600 safe Indo-European core etymologies, which include kinship terms, uh, terms for the environment, and we even have Indo-European uh, phraseology preserved in Tokarian. So it's quite clear that in, uh, Tokarian is an Indo-European language. We also have 
uh, large parts of the Indo-European inflectional system, such as uh, it is found in uh, Sanskrit, in uh, classical Greek, uh, Latin, and so forth, preserved in Tocharian. And we'll come back to that later in uh, other lectures. So, further, we may also uh, reconstruct the pre, proto, and common Tocharian phonological systems. There were many changes between Indo-European and Tocharian, but we are able to uh, quite nicely reconstruct this system. Systems. Another issue is the position of Tocharian within the Indo-European tree. Here, uh, the research community is, uh, is uh, divided into two. Most scholars agree that Tocharian roots immediately uh, in Proto-Indo-European. Uh, however, scholars don't agree whether Tocharian branched off earlier than uh, the other non-Anatolian Indo-European languages. So, we know that Tocharian forms its own branch, and the question is whether it's second to branch off, or uh, whether it has the same status as, for instance, uh, uh, Indo-Iranian, uh, Greek, and so forth, Celtic, Italic. A very important argument for Tocharian to branch off earlier than the other languages is the occurrence of so-called lexical archaisms in Tocharian. And further, the theory about the second to branch off is supported by evidence from phylogenetics. So, as I said, one of the arguments is the occurrence of lexical archaisms, and let's look at some lexical archaisms. Uh, we have the word yep, yenter, uh, enter, which means uh, enter in Tocharian, and it has changed its meaning in all the other branches. Another example is uh, Tocharian B, kerwene, uh, which means stone and rock. And uh, finally, uh, a word shran, which means adult man, or just man in general. In the other branches, it means an old and fragile uh, man or person. Now, so what's the issue here? The thing is that the meaning in Tocharian is more general, whereas in all the other languages is more special, or more specialized. And generally, languages tend to change from more general to more special, so that's why. Another argument is from phylogenetics or lexicostatistics. And uh, in lexicostatistics or phylogenetics, Tocharian consistently branches off second after Anatolian. So, we see, for instance, here on this tree that we have to carry on here, and here is where it is branching off. So, here is Proto-Indo-European, and here is Anatolian. Here is the area where Tocharian texts are found. So again, as in the previous map, the red lines represent the Silk Road, which is the important passage. And remember what I said before, it's not possible to, uh, to travel anywhere else than here, because the uh, terrain is so uh, harsh and uh, has such a, a large resistance. Here, in this map, green squares represent sites where Tocharian B is found. And, and uh, you see that you find Tocharian B over the entire area. The blue, on the other hand, represents sites where we have uh, Tocharian A and Tocharian B. And actually, there are no sites that have only Tocharian A. And then again, uh, as we said before, there are traces of Tocharian C, but not uh, text in Tocharian C. And uh, it's only loans or words in Prakrit documents. So, thank you for watching this clip about language contact of uh, Tocharian. 
And in the next introductory lesson, we will look at sources to the Tocharian language, including uh, the writing system, content of texts, as well as useful sources for learning the language.